Do you know that the Volvo Group has set the most ambitious CO2 emission reduction targets in our industry? In November 2020, Volvo Group did so by committing to the Science-Based Target Initiative. This is about full transparency of how much and how quickly greenhouse gas emission needs to be reduced in order to align with the Paris Agreement. And on June 8 this year, these targets were officially validated for the Volvo Group. But in what way do these commitments help Volvo Group and its supply chain to also stay relevant tomorrow? Well, to help me to sort that out, we have invited the Volvo Group's President and CEO, Martin Lundstedt, and of course, the host for these webcasts, Volvo Group CPO, Andrea Fuder. Welcome, Martin and Andrea. Science-based target initiative, the SBTI, is high up on the agenda for any player in the industry who wants to make an impact for a sustainable society. Martin, why is the SBTI so important for the Volvo Group? It is important because uh, it's, of course, uh, taking our responsibility uh, to, to uh, build uh, a society that we can hand over to coming generations. But it's also about uh, future-proving uh, the Volvo Group and to, to make sure that we have uh, a sustainable uh, development, but also a competitive uh, edge in our development. And, and that's the reason why we are extremely ambitious. Uh, uh, net zero uh, greenhouse gas emission 2050 in the entire rolling fleet, meaning 2040 net zero greenhouse gas emission deliveries of products and service, meaning that we will discuss later also very ambitious interim targets by 2030. So, a uh, great journey ahead. Martin, before we continue the dialogue, let's get a better understanding of what the SBTI actually is about. Let's have a look. Climate change is one of the biggest challenges of our time. The Volvo Group is committed to the goals of the Paris Agreement. Greenhouse gas emissions must be reduced to keep the global temperature well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. But how do we know that our actions are enough? The Science-Based Targets Initiative provides companies with a clearly defined path to meet the goals of the Paris Agreement. This is how it works. Based on criteria from the Science-Based Targets Initiative, each company develops its own targets to fit the business. The targets are submitted to the Science-Based Targets Initiative for independent validation, making sure they are in line with what the latest climate science deems necessary to keep global warming at a minimum. Volvo Group's climate targets have been validated, and you can follow our progress as we continuously disclose developments. Our emissions are divided into three scopes, direct greenhouse gas emissions that come from running our own operations, emissions generated from the energy we purchase, and all other indirect greenhouse gas emissions in the value chain, of which the largest part of emissions comes from the use of sold products. We are determined to have a net zero greenhouse gas value chain by 2050 at the latest, which means that all of our solutions must be net zero by 2040, as our products run on an average of 10 years. This is a journey we must do together with our suppliers, customers, and key societal players. We have set a pace in line with the Science-Based Target Initiative's higher level of ambition, the business ambition for one and a half degrees. And we are taking it even further as we aim to be a net zero emissions company by 2040. By doing this, we drive the transformation of our industry and future-proof the Volvo Group. Martin and Andrea, from this great educational movie, what would you say is the most important takeaways? Starting with you. First and foremost, uh, that uh, science shows that global warming is for real. Uh, and we really need to continue to take even uh, more firm actions, uh, accelerate our sustainable development in society at large, and not at least in our industry. Uh, we need, and that is what uh, the Paris Agreement is all about, to keep uh, the, the global warming well below two degrees, I mean, I mean in, in relation to pre-industrial levels. 
And Volvo Group has taken even more ambitious targets, uh, so saying below 1.5 degrees. And, and uh, uh, that is also uh, great to, to have that as an as ambition and target. Mm. My key takeaway, Olivia, from the movie is clearly that we have to do it together with everybody in the value chain to be really successful on our journey. And Martin, why is the Volvo Group committing to these targets now? First and foremost, because uh, uh, we need to continue to accelerate. And, and acceleration, we believe, is also linked with transparency. That you can follow it internally, externally. That there are clear targets in, in different areas. And of course, that you have the prerequisite, that you have the enabling factors to do it, which is, of course, very exciting. Uh, technology, uh, knowledge, uh, commitment. I think also political, so to speak, um, uh, commitment in, in that sector, but also uh, together with our uh, stakeholders, uh, supply chain partners, uh, customers, 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 etc. So the time for acceleration is now, and then you should also have clear, transparent and open targets. Thank you very much. Andrea, shall we have a look at the mm -hmm. set targets? Of course. Mm -hmm. so Oliver, like we have heard in this uh, movie before, we have set targets in three different scopes. Scope one being the direct emissions from running our own operations, and scope two being the indirect emissions generated by the energy we use, we purchase. And we have set ourselves the target to reduce the direct and the indirect emissions by 50% until 2030. And we have also to understand that it's not only for our sites, our plants, our offices, it also includes our dealer network. These are quite high ambitions, Martin. How are we supposed to reach them? First and foremost, I think uh, uh, to Andrea's point also, uh, we have been working with this for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. You're oft, often stressing how we are working, for example, with the sourcing of energy, green energy, mm -hmm. uh, constant, we, we were, in the Climate Saver initiative with uh, WWF uh, since many years. Emission reductions, uh, taking away waste, uh, waste uh, dip disposals, uh, harmful material, but also the whole uh, way of working with continuous improvement uh, has been extremely important. So continue to work with this, uh, utilizing new technologies and new enabling factors and, and uh, then we will continue to succeed on this journey. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, like I said before, the key thing is now also to bring in our dealer network, mm -hmm. for example, for green energy mm -hmm. and all the other yeah. things. Yeah, thank you. Martin, what about scope three? Scope three, of course, extremely important. Uh, when we look at uh, the impact over uh, the, the whole uh, cycle, it's about well to wheel and scope three, of course, product in use, but also embedded material and other factors are standing for extremely large proportion and not at least on the product in use uh, during the, the whole life cycle. Uh, we are selling production equipment. It's B2B uh, solutions that are lasting for a long period of time. And therefore, it is so extremely important to, to address that now. And what you can see here uh, when it comes to our interim targets for uh, 2030, extremely ambitious. When we see minus 40 uh, for trucks and buses, that is a reduction per vehicle kilometer. It is minus 30 in absolute uh, emission reductions by 2030 for Volvo construction equipment. And it's uh, minus 37.5% uh, for uh, Volvo Penta uh, 34. Uh, and what, what we one should remember here is uh, that we have the baseline of uh, 2019. So uh, in order to get to these extremely ambitious uh, levels, uh, it's about accelerating here and now. And, and Martin, you, you are fully right. We have to start now. Mm -hmm. And all our partners in the value chain are important. Mm -hmm. But I would like now to focus a little bit on our supply chain mm -hmm. partners. And I would like to use the following slide where we see the full value chain to discuss a little bit what contribution do we need in each phase from our supply chain. So if I start from the left, of course we as purchasing, we have the clear target to set up a CO2 neutral supply chain until 2040. And we have started now to sit together with all of you to discuss what are you doing to reduce your footprint, but also what can we do together 
to really uh, in, in extend this to the general footprint like water usage, other uh, gases, substances of con uh, constraint, etc. If we then move to the own operations, to be honest, I think here I have not to add more than what we already discussed in scope one and two. Then go into product use and <laughs> Martin, uh, you were very clear, this is the key area because this is where we have our highest mm. uh, footprint and here we need really strong technology leader. In the area, especially of electromobility, but we also have to continue to improve our combustion engine and the whole truck mm. to come to these very ambitious targets. We also have to think about the, the material, the components we use in our trucks, buses, construction equipment and the engines. How can we make them sustainable and CO2 neutral? And then finally, end of life. This is a lot about circularity. And here I just want to mention remanufacturing and refurbishment. So, Olivia, you, you see, we really need engaged supply partners in the whole value chain to make this happen. And we see that, by the way, that's the reason also why we all, when we are allocating resources now and funds uh, in, in, in future investments in technology, uh, but also in, uh, in, in capital expenditures in our facilities, and also when it comes to uh, supply chain partners and, and the common investments that we are doing that a majority of our funding is directed into these areas. Uh, strong partnerships now when it comes to battery electric vehicles. Uh, we have announced a number of those. Uh, strong way forward when it comes to fuel cell electric vehicles uh, based on the same modularity. But also continue to build the ecosystem, uh, new formed business area Volvo Energy. And uh, why is that? Because it will not be enough having fantastic newly developed combustion engines or fuel cell electric vehicles or battery electric vehicles if we don't have the right generation of energy, the right generation of fuel, uh, the right infrastructure, the right recycling, etc. And that's the reason why we are reinforcing in, in that area as well. Yeah. Thank you very much, Martin. And also thank you, Andrea, for making the expectations on the Volvo Group supply chain so clear. Uh, Martin, I would actually like to come back to the very concrete uh, interim targets for 2030. How ambitious are they, would you say? But they are very ambitious. We have been uh, uh, working with this now for quite some time, uh, both uh, to, to uh, uh, align that with uh, the roadmaps that we are having for the future. Everything is not defined yet because then we should not have uh, the stretch targets enough, but really iterating the different factors here and come to extremely ambitious. When we compare with, uh, with other companies uh, in, in our industry, we see that. Of course, we have a different baseline. Uh, we have a baseline of uh, 2019, as we can see here. Uh, but we see also that we have the 1.5 degree target uh, uh, and, and minus 40 percent and up to, to 2030. So it's extremely ambitious, uh, but we also deem it necessary to continue the journey up to 2040 and, and 2050. So uh, here we go together. Mm -hmm. Martin, Andrea, it's always a fantastic to listen to you. I can tell how important this is for you. Um, to all supply chain partners that have watched this webcast today, what is your wish that they bring from this conversation? Starting with you, Martin. Now first and foremost that we work together, uh, that we uh, continue to have a dialogue, how can we make this contribution because the success in this journey will uh, only be possible if we are truly deep in, continue to deepen the relations about innovation, about technology, about uh, knowledge, about uh, a long term commitment etc. Uh, so, so I think that is number one. Be curious, uh, many of uh, our partners are already working with this. How can we make a joint contribution? And, and uh, that will be uh, extremely important. Andrea? Well, for me, it is exactly this, working uh, together. And we have started this journey. And Oliver, we also have to admit, we have already now uh, many partners who inspire us. And this is what we have to continue, that we uh, together define actions. And uh, at the end of the day, we, we really come then to actions which are implemented. and. 2040, this is already in 19 years. So it is actions now. CO2 reduction, sustainable material in our vehicles, and so on and so forth. So let's sit together, let's be full transparent. 
Martin, you often refer to that the partnership is the new leadership. This is something that um, you maybe would like to wrap it up with. No, no, but I think, I mean, uh, in a way, uh, this is the uh, biggest challenge uh, since, uh, I mean, the Industrial Revolution. Uh, but on the sa at the same time, it's, it's, it's also the biggest opportunity for, for everyone that really wants to drive this, uh, this agenda. But what we can see in order to succeed in our journey, uh, we need to continue to build an extremely strong ecosystem uh, beyond uh, the, what we are used to do. Uh, because if we are not succeeding to build a complete well-to-wheel uh, value chain, uh, sustainable, we will not reach those targets. So it, uh, as we have said, it is about our uh, already well-established uh, uh, supply chain partners. It is about new ones. It is about, I mean, downstream with our dealers that uh, Andreas yeah. talked about. It is about our customers, 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 uh, other societal players, the political uh, uh, arena, etc. And, and therefore, partnership is the new leadership, I think, is uh, summarizing what we need uh, to have uh, as, uh, as a way of working. Thank you very much and thank you very much for watching this webcast. Take care and bye bye. When I stand at the mountain top getting ready for the descent, that's the best feeling of a complete ski tour. You're just there, here and now. And just being there is just a fantastic feeling itself. Align on your mission. When we're setting off on a new adventure, one of the most important things is to be aligned in the team of, of what you're about to do. Why are you doing this and what do you want to achieve? Set targets. Set a base plan that you agree on and that all are on board on because it's always about the team together performing something. Challenge yourself. When you're out on the adventure and the ski tour, it's also about challenging yourself and challenging the team to really explore new grounds and to do the ultimate ski descent. My name is Johan Engebratt and I work at Volvo Group with our future propulsion technologies. What drives me is to develop new transport solutions for a sustainable future, to be part of shaping the world that we all want to live in. <laughs>